Hello, hello, and welcome back to Traps Tuesday Toots. I have something to go over with you guys today that I think is going to be very helpful. Uh, we're going to talk about pulse extenders. Now, what do I mean by pulse extenders? So, a stone button has a pulse of 10 ticks, which is about a second, and a wooden button has a pulse of 15 ticks, which is about a second and a half. Uh, and that'll go through a repeater, and it'll turn on whatever system it is in this case we have set up with a lamp and if you change the repeater to four ticks instead of one tick it adds an extra three ticks to that pulse but it doesn't make it very long so what you can do is you can do a little system like this which sticks uh, three four tick repeaters uh, going around in a circle and has one four tick repeater going straight in from the source so that'll just extend out how long the lamp is on but if you need something bigger than that you're gonna to need to do something else um, so one of the things that is pretty common these days is these comparator repeaters I mean pulse extenders and they work by taking that signal oh what basically happens is this comparator gets a signal of 16 and puts out 16 here then this goes ahead and puts out a signal of 15 because it's one over and this picks it up and then this puts out 15 14 14 13 so forth and so on until it finally dies out and turns off uh, which is great and you can go ahead and build longer and longer repeaters in that same style and they will all last a little bit longer we'll go over that here in a second um, another version of a pulse extender would actually be just a dropper with a pressure plate that's wooden, a stone pressure plate won't work, uh, but either of the metal pressure plates or a wooden pressure plate will. Um, if you drop an item onto it, it will turn on and it will stay on until that item despawns or is picked up. So if you make it so that you can't get to that as a player, this will stay on for five minutes and then it will turn off. Another little system is this guy right here. It works a lot like an ethyl hopper clock, which we'll get into in a future video, but uh, basically, it will go ahead and turn on the system as long as it takes these items to dr drop into this hopper and then back into this hopper. Um, and so that will work like this. This is a sticky piston and this is a regular piston. If they're both sticky piston, it becomes a hopper clock. But if it's a sticky piston and a regular piston, it will work as a, a pulse extender. That is the first half of the pulse extender. And in just a little bit here, there it is. That is how long that will stay on with 32 items. Now you can use any number of items in here from one all the way up to a full stack, five stacks. Um, so depending on how long you want it to stay on, you can change that up. All right. So over here, uh, basically, the more comparators you add into this system, the more time it will stay on. Now the one thing you do have to do, uh, remember whatever your source is, is going to be what powers this for however long it powers it. So in the case of a stone button, that's 10 ticks. If it's a wooden button, it's 15 ticks. If it's a, uh, uh, an observer, that's only one tick. Now a one tick won't actually power any of these properly. If you added more items than you have Sorry, if you add more comparators than you have ticks, then you may run into a problem where you won't actually be able to uh, make it work. And so what you're going to end up with is more of a clock than a pulse extender because it's not going to have enough power to fill everything before the input power turns off. And that's kind of important that it, that it does go ahead and turn on all the comparators before the power turns off and I can demonstrate that by replacing the button with a torch and then getting rid of it quickly see like that that's not an ideal situation um, so you need to make sure that it is a long enough signal now uh, the other option you can do is you used to be able to do a very simple stacked comparator 
a pulse extender that Exumavoid used to uh, demonstrate, uh, but unfortunately 1.16 broke that system because the uh, redstone pushing into a block actually powers this block. So this gets more signal than what it would have in the past. So what I've done is I've designed this, which is similar to his design, and makes it work again. Now what you can do is different combinations of comparators on these lines and you just have to make sure that this comes up an extra block in the exumavoid design the comparator would actually be sitting here on top of a block here and that would make it not work but by by raising it up we can get this to still work as a pulse extender and actually it does do pulse extending a little longer than the original design <laughs> Now on this particular one, the decay is just like this side because what we've done is this is a two length redstone and this is a two length redstone. So we have the same decay rate like this because of the two and two. Uh, but on all the rest of these, you actually have half the decay rate because there's only one place in the system where it's two and then everywhere else it's no more than one. And what that allows you to do is use fewer comparators to get the same length of an extension. Um, so, as you can see, there's different combinations. You can do use a single piece of redstone and that won't decay at all. So you can stick a comparator with a, and another comparator with a piece of redstone in between, two comparators up here, your two redstone here, and your one redstone here. And you can do the exact same circuit but with three comparators on the bottom. So then that will give you a four comparator length and a five comparator length. So with this design, you can actually extend the pulse extension by one comparator at a time, which is also pretty cool. Uh, this design, you have to do it by two comparators at a time or you won't, you'll, you'll decay a lot faster because you'll have to have three pieces of redstone whenever you have an odd number of comparators. Anyway, so there's, there's, you can extend this out as long as you want. Again, you do need to make sure that the input signal is long enough to make it uh, power everything before the input signal turns off, or you're going to have the same problem as these guys over here. Uh, but this will work quite nicely. If you do need to extend it because you don't have quite enough length, you can always add the repeater uh, to four ticks or two ticks or three ticks or whatever you need uh, just to give it a little bit longer to power up. All right, back over here, I did want to point out that you can replace this redstone with a another comparator. Now you have four comparators in this system, and so it will work just like your four comparator system right here. Unfortunately, there's no way to do this stacked version with two comparators, because any combination of that is going to end up with a three redstone line, which will make it decay much faster. So that's just not going to work out. But anything else from three on, you can use this system. You can also extend that out even further to make it um, five or six or whatever. However, the problem with doing that is once you get to six, Go with this option because this option will time out the same as a six comparator set over here using only three comparators saving yourself some resources uh, because it only decays on one side so this is this with a six comparator like it's pretty close it, it is going to be a little bit less because you don't get the extra tick of delay each time but you do get the same decay rate so it, it, it's going to be basically the same um so unless you need a very specific timing, I would I would go with this option over this. But uh, just like before, if you were to go ahead and just extend this out an extra block, um, and by just like before, I mean just like with the other set, uh, you could go ahead and do just that. And now uh, one of these becomes redstone. We come up to the top. We have two comparators. And now you have five, or you have six, whatever you want. You can do it exactly the same um, using this system, and then it will time out the same as this. So that is another option for you. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, because there's four here and two here, this technically would be like one tick off because it didn't go through, because it went through four before it looped back around instead of just three, but... It's unless it's super specific, your circuitry 
it's going to work for you. So it's just a compact way. Now, the one thing to note, it's not quite tileable because if this redstone and this redstone touch, obviously these two become the same circuit. So that's not going to work for you. But it's almost tileable. It's it, it's as close as you can get. You can get it one closer than this. So you can stick two in the place, or or you could easily stick three of these in the place of what would take two for this. So it's 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 not tileable, but it is a lot more compact option, and it just goes vertically instead of horizontally, which is nice for some situations. Um, that is five different versions of pulse extenders. I hope that is helpful for you guys. I hope that uh, uh, helps you guys build some redstone projects in the future. And uh, have a good one, guys. And remember, don't get trapped without me. Bye-bye.